Good morning, good afternoon, maybe it's a good evening, good night for some people in Netherlands, right? It's evening, maybe over there. Um, anyway, my name is Sachin Patel. Um, I work with this company called CGG. Uh, we does uh, seismic processing. So it's a pretty cool uh, thing that we do. We basically go into the marine and on our land and we look for the oil. And uh, whenever we find that, that's the data that a uh, big company like Shell and Exxon and them uses it to drill the hole and get the oil out, right? And so basically the main focus for my company is image processing. Um, so we have a huge number of data uh, and a lot of processing power to do the image processing. Um, and since college, I joined this company. So it's almost 24 years, I'm still working. And uh, 15 plus years, I work as a Unix Linux administrator from uh, Sun OS, HP UX to all different kinds of flavor in the Linux. Then last five years, I switched to Oracle DBA. And from almost one and a half year, I'm exclusively doing ELK, nothing else. Uh, dropped everything about DBA and Unix and everything, just ELK. All right, so today's agenda is pretty simple. Always there is a problem and there is a solution, right? And I'm gonna talk about what the problem was and how did we uh, solve the problem or what we're doing it and how, to, how do we solve it. Sachin, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. But, um, your slides are showing as being slightly cut off for us. So we might need to reduce- Oh, your... because my screen is too huge. How about- uh... Can I just do it like this? Sure, I think, uh, but you're not in presentation mode. So we can see all your slides. That's fine. I mean, okay. if nobody has a well, problem, it's okay. Yeah. To me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. If that works for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Don't here. Me. Perfect. Okay. So you won't do it the way I wanted to do it, but that's fine. So the problem, uh, generally it's a user complaint, right? When, um, Generally, the user always, sometimes user complaints uh, that I have seen is like, oh, I'm clicking on this and it doesn't show up because he's expecting to show up at 10 seconds, but it might take 20 seconds. So impatient user and things like that. But this time the complaint was legit. The user was complaining that it's taking forever to get any data out from the database. There was a number of reason it was happening because there was too many query that was running against the database. And that too many query and lot of update was slowing down the database. And in fact, the database was growing a huge uh, as well. So all combined together was saying that it's slow. And so a user was uh, complaining a lot. So as a team, as a database team, uh, we were looking different thing and how to solve this problem. So any, solution to the any problem, right? Has multiple maybe solution and multiple option you can use. So the first thing came up in our mind is to use the middle layer, which takes the load from the database. But the very first thing was the data warehouse because we are primarily Oracle. We also have a MySQL, SQL Server and many other uh, uh, platforms, but Oracle is the main. But data warehouse is mucho dinero. And as you know, nobody is going to approve that much amount of money due to this COVID thing. Plus the uh, oil market was slowing down um, because the oil prices was going down. So another option was to redesign the database and make it efficient. But again, that's mucho dinero because you have to hire people uh, to redesign. Uh, the third option was to put it into the new platform through a lot of hardware. But that's also a lot, of pro a lot of money and you are not fixing the original problem. You're just transferring problem from one place to another place. And uh, so we were thinking outside the box and it says, uh, I mean, what should we do? How do we, how do we put the middle layer? Uh, and all this solution is like time consuming and costly. So, um, Last option, like I wrote it down, is do nothing. 
but that's not the option actually. <laughs> it's just a, a lazy way to escape from the problem. Um, so it's not the tool, uh, what tool does, like ELK does or Grafana or a lot of other uh, technology out there, MongoDB or so many other databases that you can put it in the middle and can use it. But how do you use that tool uh, to your advantage? So ELK generally is like a log analysis or same or search engine, but we have completely using different way of ELK. I'll show you how. So let's see the next slide. How do I go to the next one? There you go. So uh, we decided the first option, let's put some middle layer, put a lot of, um, uh, put a data there and let the user access it. So we thought completely outside the box. We went to the users community. So we have a different, uh, different user group. So we went one by one to the each user group and says, you are running a query uh, 30 times a day or 400 times a day. What kind of query it is? What information do you need? Which information and how often do you need that information from the database? Is that information a constantly updating information or is it a static information, right? All that thing we collected and we saw that 95% of the time user is just asking for the data, which is old static data. So uh, we say, okay, we can use that data, put it in an elk and use the elk's search capability to do the analytic on it. So once we put the POC proof of concept into the ELK small cluster, three node, simple, smaller system, and we saw them one month data and uh, some of the users saw the speed that they can access the data. Everybody loved it. And from then onwards, our job got easier and easier because the other user community started accepting it. So what we did is we took the data from the database combine multiple tables, join them together and create a one flat index and provided that as a data to the user. We also tried to do as much automation as we can do from the beginning. And this was the clean slate for us. So we had a complete uh, control and authority on how to design our uh, data structure underneath the el elastic search, right? And in fact, when we put this thing, it proved really efficient, it's fast, and it added the analytical capability for all the data which was in a database, which was taking forever for user to access it and do the analysis on it. So there's three things that we did, how to pull the data and when to pull the data, and how do we put in, that into the ELK. So we had Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, text, log file, everything. Log and a text file is very minor part of it. Mainly it's the database. And then we use the log test to put that into the ELK. Uh, we did not have a Python uh, knowledge in our group. So we didn't use the Python initially. From last three months, we have started using Python as well. Um, because that's very useful. We started learning it and we, it's very easy to use anyway. And the last thing was how to provide that data to the user. And this was also some challenges uh, to let people make sure that we use the Kibana and not the Grafana because we are also have a Grafana shop and some of the Grafana uh, group was pushing back. <clears throat> but once they saw that Kibana is uh, really faster accessing data from Elastic rather than via Grafana. So if Grafana tried to access the data from Elastic search, it's a little bit slower than what Kibana does anyway. So then we use a multiple space, different space like a tenant base that some of you guys might know and use a different group. So we have about like seven or eight different group that we are serving. So they have a sp uh, specific uh, access, specific space for them and they have a full access to that space so they can design their own dashboard. And that is giving user a full authority to create a dashboard that, that in fact turns out to be so much better because you know people love control. So when they got the control to create their own dashboard, uh, 
they are more um, dedicated to use it. All right, so next step was the ETL process, how to extract the data, transform it and load it. Most of you have seen this slide, pretty simple, right? Many places on the uh, uh, internet, you have seen this slide. So it's real quickly go through it. I use the source as this database. We use the JDBC. We have file bits, some CSV input and some Kafka input, but mainly it's a JDBC. Then we transform the data into all the filters, put it in Elasticsearch. And so the destination is Elasticsearch. We didn't use any other thing, Kafka or any other database, straight to Elasticsearch. All right. Simple logs test input section, where initially we didn't know that you can use this uh, variable and we was hard coding the data. Uh, password, username and password. Once we figured out, we started using all these things so it would become more security uh, prone and nobody complains us. Anyway, so what we does is we select whatever field we want from multiple tables. We join the multiple tables basically. And we say, okay, status of the job. I'm, I'm talking in the whole presentation is about image processing. So one image processing is one job, basically, and there is thousands of them, millions of them that runs throughout the year. So we say six state minus 60 minutes. So in last 60 minutes, whichever job has a status updated, give me that data and all the required fields. I'll go through what some required field that we collected. So every one hour it runs, gives me data, then it does a bunch of transformation and we put it out in Elasticsearch. And so these are some of the filter section. Uh, this basically we just introduced a few months back because we had a major issue by year end. I'll explain what that major issue was. All right, so uh, using this index and using this data, uh, we can figure out who ran the job, which system it ran the job, which module it used it, how long it ran, what was the status? I mean, was it the job parallel job or mono job, or it's a GPU job or a CPU job? What kind of error message? Uh, and then from that error message, you can figure out, okay, some error X, Y, Z is like 50% failure all the time. And so the developer programmers can go and check that module. Um, and fix it. Um, maybe that particular module is using so much CPU, then they can go and upgrade their, uh, their programming uh, module. All of these things was not available until we put this thing ELK in a place because everything was in a database, everything was in a text, in Excel format, maybe. Um, so basically this is the one record. There are multiple other things, I just trimmed it down. I have about 150 or so uh, field. It tells me all about when the job ran, all these things. And this job number at the end in a purple is my unique ID because every job is a unique ID. And that way I do not duplicate the data, all right? Otherwise, many say we didn't know that you need to have a document ID. We are learning as we go. We had a multiple duplicate um, because every 60 minute it runs and the job is still running and I have a duplicate record. So when the year rolls over, so from 2019, um, let's say in December, 2020, this job one, two, three was running. And so at top of 11 o'clock, my log test ran and it picked up this job and it says it's submitted and it registered into the index called job underscore data in 2020, 12 o'clock. It says, oh, it's running and it picked up and registered and updated. So now submitted status become running. Now at one o'clock, it's still running. So it doesn't do anything because it didn't, it, it picked up, but it says it's still same thing. Then at two o'clock, but actually the job finished at one o'clock and 30 minute it picked up and it registered. So now I have a duplicate record, one right here in this index 
and one right here in this index. Okay, sorry, it's not presented more so. And that's why we use this thing because every job when we submit, it's fixed year. I mean, fixed date, it doesn't change. Only the status change and other things change like completed time changes, running time changes, all other time change, but submitted time stays there. So we use the grok pattern to get the year out and we created this metadata index and we add that thing. So now when I go here, this job says I am part of 2020 index. And even when it comes here, it knows that where to put the data. And so we avoided that duplicate at the rollover, at the rollover of the year. All right, so that's how we fixed that issue just recently. All right, this is the output section. We define all the data host however many you have. Now I have a few more data host. Is the index name and we use the document ID. And we use a variable. This is an environment variable on a Linux system um, for the username and password. Now there was another problem happened because I was running a, a, this interval one hour. When my job finished at 1.30 here, 1.30 a.m., right? It didn't pick up for 30 minutes. So user doesn't know whether it's finished, failed, or is it still running? And so another user complaint start coming in that, oh, my job is finished at maybe on top of 11 o'clock and 10 minutes, but I didn't see the report until another 40, 55 minutes. So to avoid this problem or to fix this problem, we introduce something else now, which is uh, we introduce another log test. So the first log test runs every 60 minutes and gives me the 60 minute window data. Another log test runs every five minutes and gives me that data. The reason we are still doing this 60 minute is because if something happens and we wanna shut down the log test for let's say 10 minutes, we do not want to lose that 10 minute of data. So we still keep that one. But eventually the goal is to have a, a proper log test server uh, with high availability or something, some kind of something <laughs> to, to drop that 60 minute interval uh, SQL and reduce one more SQL that's going to the database. And so, so the user accepted that, okay, it will be five minute delay of my job but that's acceptable rather than waiting for one hour to query the database. All right. So when we finish this thing and along all this process, we face uh, quite a few problem. And one problem was if Logstat log stopped working at midnight or sometimes what are you gonna do? We, we are not constantly monitoring the log stats. We don't have a manpower to do it. And we do not have alerting uh, set up yet. Uh, there's maybe credential change in Oracle and somebody uh, remove my username or change my password, which is connecting to the via log stats uh, and the data pool is stopped. Um, or some any other random reason my data ingestion is stopped. To solve that problem, we wrote a Python code which goes out into the index, basically use a call query uh, from the Linux system. It runs uh, whenever, I mean, it's really, really easy to do. So rather than this now 24 hour, you can do like one hour or even 10 minute and it will collect the count of last 10 minute record. If it is less than zero, that means your ingestion is stopped. There should be non-stop data coming in. And then it sends email. Um, and it's basically using this uh, request.get and call behind it. So this is the query. This query is basically this query. And another major problem that I just already discussed was the duplicate record. And sometimes the wrong record information uh, comes in as well. 
but it's very hard to pinpoint how it came and it's very very rarely happens uh, it's maybe something to do with the database maybe database stopped crashed and it created the uh, unnecessary field or something in a database i i do not know yet but we're not very concerned about that one So uh, log says we have combined more pieces to it. So it's not only Oracle database or MySQL database. For example, we have a site, Houston, Dallas, Calgary. We have many, many uh, sites throughout the world. And the job information do not have that one, that where the job ran from. But that is completely on a different database. So what we did is that we pulled the site information, the project name, and when uh, we put this, uh, logs as a, what do you call it? translate filter translate filter and so it's a project equal to this and then site is this project is two then it's also on site one and we inserted that uh, field into the index so now i have site which uh, till we we did this thing nobody has no idea i mean not the proper way to do it anyway so we use the translate filter we just pull this uh, CSV from another database once a day, and we use that into our ingestion process. All right, now the nitty gritty, this, the, the, the good part is all this analysis thing. Um, and uh, everybody loved it when we sort this thing out. Just to give you an example, I have 111 million jobs in 2020 and uh, 22 million so far in 21 right in three months before all this thing when i we was running a query and pulling the data that how many jobs it runs and how many was successful and how many was failed it takes almost like four hour, four plus hour to get only that data now using this thing one year data takes only 15 seconds and it shows up so basically, we we just mimicking the middleware warehouse, basically uh, free of cost. In fact, so as you can see in the previous, it tells me that in, this is the last month report that I'm uh, cut and paste here. So in last month, I have five percent failure, which is acceptable uh, by the business. That's fine. If not, then they have to do something about it, and. This is again one month takes only five seconds to do all this thing. Now you select the one month on Kibana. It tells me how many jobs fail with what kind of error message and the whole programming department that does all this image processing sees this thing and says, oh, we have some kind of a problem here. Let's go fix the code. Which they were having a hard time figuring out how many are failing why is it failing and all the different reasons my main user now is all this developer they 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 love it next so very interesting thing we deal with this so the compute uh, power that we have there is a the whole department which manages all these computers and resources and everything right and they always wanted to see how many fail jobs they have and are they properly utilizing their computers, compute power, uh, so they can cross charge other department and all that other nitty gritty things. So now they can come here and say something had happened here at 540 and 25% of the job fail. Is it due to the hardware? Is it due to power? Is somebody did something weird? And they can go narrow it down, select this part and go deeper down because we have all the information in elk now all right so then they go back here and says oh okay at this time it's a different day different time uh, the successful is only 50 percent but not to worry because somebody just canceled 20 percent of the job and if they go deep down on this kibana they can see which project is canceling this job do they doing this every day every other week are they doing this purposefully somebody is doing something weird or 
maybe there's a new hire. He doesn't know how to do this thing. And he's very shy to ask somebody how to do it. So they can go approach him and says, okay, let's, let's do the class or something and teach him how to do it rather than wasting the resources. Now we also did this table, which is, you can see very interesting, all the color coded and easily eye popping. So the resource team goes there, compute team goes there and says, oh, okay, I have a hundred percent failure here, but it's only four jobs, not to worry about it. If it's like 5,000 job and 5,000 fail, then they have to go talk to their people for their project people, right? Now with this thing, they, they, they easily ignore it and whoever they need to talk, they can talk right away. All right. We also did this for some of the people who doesn't like the graphics. They, they allow their gets hand dirty. So they like the queries. They want to take that data, put it in some other graphical tools like plot Y or, or something. Maybe they love Excel. Who knows, right? So we gave them Excel query. And so now using this query, for example, for one year data, gives me only 10 seconds to aggregate this one. And this one takes hour to get it from the database. So these are for the big management people because they generally don't care about day-to-day -day things. They wanna see 12 month quarterly report or four year report. Everything is now easily doable. And the main thing we have used is uh, restrict all the groups to their own area. So if they create their own dashboard or visualization, they are not stepping on other groups and they are not deleting other groups, visualization or dashboards. All right, so as you can see, it's just a sample, but I have multiple, excuse me. I have multiple space, um, multiple roles and users. And in fact, uh, from now we are also letting uh, responsible user to put the data uh, by creating the user, which is only right to particular index only. And they cannot do anything else but write the data to that index. And so we can uh, properly control it. And that's how we solve our initial problem of slow response. Any questions? Yeah, so I, I have a question. Where do you, I mean, what's kind of the next steps in your process here? What do you see as kind of the, the next goals for your project? So this one was all pulling out data from a database, right? It's all processed, it's all done, it's all in a pipeline. We are still improving, we are still pulling some more data as user getting aware uh, of the process. They says, oh, wow, this is interesting. I have never done this thing before. Let's do this for this data or that data. So that aside, we are now trying to focus on uh, getting the system data, which is a metric bit data, and correlate that with this, uh, with this one. So let's say my job one, two, three ran for five hours in 10 machine, right? I wanted to see from the system level or the other people, actually wanted to see from the system level that that process that was running at that 10 machine for five hour, was it using uh, proper resources? Uh, and are there any resource lab to run more jobs to it? So they can properly schedule more jobs to run on that resource, basically on that computer, right? If you look at just one computer, one job, if it's running using only 50 gig of RAM and I have I have 100 gig of RAM. That means I can run 10 more jobs to it if they are only five gig of job, something like that, right? So we are gonna tie together that one, which is a very, very big project though, by the way, because we have to correlate that with this job information. That's the next big project that we are pushing for. Thank you. So um, I'm interested in learning more about how Sachin took data from the database and combined multiple tables into a single index. Can you share a bit about that, Sachin? 
Yes. So what was it? All right. So here. So basically, all the previous thing we pull the data. Data one to let's say X Y Z is being pulled from the database, and one of the field is called project name, right? And that project name has no. I mean, the whole that database has no information called site. That information is stored in some other database. And so you, so what we did is run another JDBC connection once a day and pull this information called project and a site, project and a site. So there is a thousand project, for example, and thousand different site, or, or maybe 50 site, oh, sorry. <laughs> thousand project, 50 site, right? That's a global information, stays in some other database in a globally, we pull that thing. And in a log test, there's a filter called translate. So when my project field comes from the database, it says, hey, my name is project one. So it goes out into this CSV file, which is a YML file, only two column, project name and a site name, project name and a site name. And it takes whatever is here and puts it here. So this one record has proper project and a proper site now. Did that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Basically, what you're saying is that Logstash is helping you transform the data and put it into the index proper in the in the way that you want it to. Absolutely, yes, yes. Great. The filter called translate. Anyone else have any awesome questions? That was a great question, Whitney. Thank you. And we, in fact, also doing a lot of other stuff for other department now as they knows it. Uh, for example. Um, Yes, another another database which keeps track of all the uh, the compute power. So, computer, um, how many down, how many up, uh, storage size, and everything, which is in a different database. And so they wanted to see daily uh, report. Uh, I mean, aggregated. Okay, so so what happens that if somebody goes and um, adds the disk space, the total disk space becomes plus one, right? They wanted to see when it was added and how much it was added, how much was reduced and when it was reduced. All that thing is not in a database because it's not a, a saving a historical data, right? It's a, the live data, live view, basically. So we take that view every 10 minute, 15 minute and put it in Elk and we save it with the timestamp. So now they have a better picture of when the storage added, when it was removed, uh, how many jobs ran per month on historically, right? And so they can figure it out and says, hey, yeah, uh, generally the June month is more storage needed and they can maybe rent it and then they can get rid of it. So basically we are not using Elk as a log analysis uh, the, the way I think it was, displayed or something, but I mean, we are using completely differently. We're taking data and doing analysis on a different stuff. I had another question for you, uh, Sachin. You mentioned that initially your queries were so slow because there were so many queries coming in at one time during, and the system was updating. Um, have you seen that your queries have stayed at the same rate once you put all your data into Elk or have you been able to increase your queries? So, so basically that, that statement was saying that when there is, a, let's say my job is running, it's finished. So now it has to go to the database and update the record, correct? There are thousands of such things goes on. And at the same time, user goes and it runs a query uh, and says, hey, how, what's the status of my job? And they go run every five minutes and there are hundreds of users. So there are so many query gets run against that database. And that, that's why everything gets slowed down. Even the update gets slowed down, the report gets slowed down. Now we have told all the users not to look or not to touch the database, but touch the elk and get the same data five minute uh, uh, delay. So uh, the update has get, getting faster. So all the update that was getting slow is now up to date, live, time to time really awesome. Thank you for answering my question. We had one question from the chat uh, from Christian. Uh, what was the object or benefit at the end uh, to use Elk as a data warehouse? What was the sort of 
final <laughs> bullets on that? <laughs> Uh, so initially, when we started looking, we had no idea that we are going to use Elk, right? We was trying MongoDB, and we tried different database. We tried MySQL. We said, okay, let's just take the data and put it in somewhere else. Not on Oracle, uh, because then you have to pay the license, uh, so and so. And uh, you're putting the same thing back to the same thing. And then, but every time when we put either in a MongoDB or any other there is no analytic capability or graphical view of the whole thing, right? Um, that we got it from the elk due to, due to Kibana. And in fact, uh, Elastic has its own database underneath it, which is JSON formatted, you all know, Lucent formatted. Um, and all of the faster database that we were looking, they all pretty much use Lucent or some kind of JSON document oriented. And that's the main reason we use Elk, which gives us the analytical capability, in fact. And believe it or not, initially, when we put this data uh, to the Elk, some people were still asking, how do I export this into Excel? <laughs> and it took a while for me to con uh, convince them that, okay, don't use the Excel. That's the old way. Let's, let's go there, learn something new, and use this Kibana. And that's, that's why when we gave them access to design their visualization, they liked it. 